Helen Murray Free wasn't born with a love of chemistry. It took a world war to shift her from a career goal of teaching English and Latin to science. In high school in Poland, Ohio, near Youngstown, Helen got straight A's. And thanks to a mentor, an English teacher named Miss Johnson, Helen decided to become an English and Latin teacher. With World War II brewing for the United States, times were changing. The winds of war shifted Helen onto a new career path. And as we'll see, millions of people with diabetes and other medical conditions benefited. In those days, uh, we, we, we uh, uh, women could be teachers, nurses, or secretaries. Uh, and um, my goal was to be an English teacher like Miss Johnson. And uh, I entered the College of Worcester in September of 41. And um, in December, Pearl Harbor happened. Men left to fight in the war leaving the halls of science departments empty. That situation wasn't good for colleges or for the country, but it did help open the door to more science careers for women. The house mother, or chaperone of female students at Wooster, had a word with Helen one evening at the dinner table. She turned to me and she said, you're taking chemistry, aren't you, Helen? And I said, yeah. You get good grades? Well, I was a nerd. I got good grades and everything. And uh, she said, why don't you switch? And I said, okay. Just like that. And just like that, Free was a chemistry major, taking classes during the summer so that she could graduate early in 1944. Right after graduating, she started a job at Miles Laboratories, now owned by Bayer, as a quality control chemist. But after a few years, she grew bored with the quality control job, and this led to another change in Helen's career path. I kept bugging them to do research because I thought well, that we'd be more glamorous to do research. Um, and so finally they said, uh, this guy from Western Reserve University is setting up a biochemistry se section and go over and, and um, maybe he'll give you an interview. Well, he did and um, he hired me and two years later I married the boss. Good timing opened the door for free, allowing her the opportunity to finally do research, which she so craved. And as luck would have it, she met her soulmate while on the job. Over the 53 years that they worked together, Free and her husband, Alfred, were a dynamic scientific duo, developing many important diagnostic tests. The most famous ones are clinistics, which they developed in 1956 and are still used today to measure glucose levels in the urine of diabetics. Before these so-called dip and read strips, patients had to go to the hospital or a doctor's office for a complicated test. The strips gave patients greater control over their health and their lives. The ACS recognized the Freeze Dip and Read Diagnostic Strips as a National Historic Chemical Landmark. It got Helen and Al two places in the National Inventors Hall of Fame and a handshake from President Obama in 2010 when he awarded Helen the National Medal of Technology and Innovation. Those test strips were a big deal. Oh man, it was used all over the world and, and, and because it because it was so simple and easy to use uh, and, and you, had, you had no external uh, needs uh, at all, you, just a simple test to dip it into the urine specimen and uh, watch for the color to develop. Uh, it, it, there's, there's, it's still used and, and um, it's, uh, I don't know how many millions, billions of tests uh, have been sold. Free stayed with Miles Laboratories in the Bayer era. She officially retired in 1982, but stayed on for many years as a consultant for Bayer Diagnostics in Elkhart, Indiana. Communicating science to the public continues to drive free. The ACS even named its Public Outreach Award after her. In this International Year of Chemistry, what advice does Helen Free have for young people in the United States and around the world? For young people taking those first steps down career paths? I, I, I say try, try again. Uh, the, ex the experience I've had are experiments never turn out the way, uh, it's serendipity. Uh, they they give you unexpected results, and and, and to follow the, to follow the path that they lead uh, to is uh, one kind of advice. 
Um, secondly, uh, there are scholarships, abundant scholarships in uh, science available uh, and, and grants to be, to be uh, applied for. Uh, and if you want something badly enough, you'll find a way to, to, uh, to attain them. Uh, the, the goals of science are, um, are, are to, to help people and it's a great way to uh, uh, help the population, um, the, the global population. And um, with the era of globalization coming, it, it's, it's any language, any, any uh, uh, discipline um, is, is uh, there for the taking.